Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your ever-loving host, Shorty, and today we're reviewing uh, the first issue in a horror anthology called Swan Songs. Um, and developing this horror anthology means we're going to talk about the form of it straight away, just because there's ways to do anthologies well and there's ways not to. The most popular way of doing it seems to be you break down a story into multiple parts and put it over six issues, with another three stories also being broken into six parts over uh, six issues. And that's kind of fine, I suppose, if that's the way you want to do it. 2008 has been doing it for years, Heavy Metal does it. It's totally reasonable. However... I thoroughly prefer this way of doing it, which is one issue, one story. Um, same artist, uh, sorry, same writer, different artist. Um, same basic theme, in this case, the endings of things, hence swan songs. But then next issue, within the same theme, with the same writer, it's going to have different artists. It's going to have uh, Casper Wingyard coming in, which I'm really looking forward to. I really like Casper. Uh, this one is uh, Martin Simmons, with the writer H. Maxwell Prince on there. Now, these are two people I highly admire, uh, and I've been looking forward to this one, simply because I think, as I said, it's doing something better with the form of it. Uh, and also, I've read stuff and seen artwork by these people before. And both of them are, in my head, like what they do is horror more than anything else, but they also can do other things. H. Maxwell Prince's stuff can go into kind of the zany and comedic at times, and it's certainly full full of emotion and sometimes even like going far reaches of uh, surrealism. Um, Ryan Simmons, I mostly know him from a Department of Truth, one of my favourite horror comic books of all time, but he also did a really good funny detective story with Joe Hill. So both of them have like different ways that they can present the uh, craft. In this case, we are leaning more into the horror of it, but there is also a sense of warmth and a nice emotional uh, beats going on, and weirdly an occasional funny moment too, because this particular ending is uh, nearing a post-apocalyptic kind of state, uh, in an already dystopian uh, end state of the world, counting down to apocalypse, literally there is a countdown seen throughout the comic book, big red numbers counting down from 60 to 1, uh, but nobody's 100% sure what's going to happen when it's 1, other than that it is going to destroy the world. Um, and it's a story of one young man trying to do what he can for his mum just to make the last moment start a little bit better, and his mum's already dying from cancer, so we already know that she's, like, even if the world doesn't end, this is a thing that could happen, uh, like she was going to die. And that straight away had me thinking, well, is everything he's seeing, like, part of his psyche, dealing with the idea that if his mum goes, maybe his world will end? He's talking about, like, her meetings he's had with his uh, therapist, when, how parasocial, not parasocial, uh, how, um much they rely on each other, like the relationship is very much codependent and he is the lower end of that scale. And you could see maybe that he has put so much into this relationship that without his mother there, this could be the end of his world. Uh, and that's just one take on it. The other is that this is literally um, the world burning into flames and they use this to some nice emotional beats and also some kind of humour. There's nice little bits of people being, we told you this was going to happen. Um, and it feels kind of on the nose for people of a certain generation. Um, but what I got from it more than anything else, and it's kind of telling of my age, I am Gen X, I, I came through the nihilistic 90s, um, and I think a millennial might get a very different read on this one, but we know the world is going to end. It is explicitly stated very early in this combat that it's going to end, but there is still hope going on. And it's not a positive hope for a lot of people, I don't think. It's almost like that riff on the live, laugh, love kind of thing, but instead of that, it's the, uh, like all things, this too shall pass. And a lot of people who are into, like, uh, overt, aggressive positivity use that as a, like, oh, no, no, it's not that bad, it's all going to be fine. I think the, the millennial, uh, uh, nihilistic Gen Xers will see that and think, oh, my God, it's going to end. Um, and it is kind of that vibe I got from this, that this isn't, like, a sudden end of the world. It has been building for some time, and as a result of that, the world has been falling apart. It is horrific. There are emo literal emotional vampires and children stabbing other children. It is a nightmare scape of horrendous existence. And the idea that it will end, even if there's nothing positive on the other side of it, my brain latched onto that, and that's not a great thing to think. I don't like the fact that I think that way. I would much rather try to fight against that kind of, like, radiant to dying, like, that's my kind of thing. But also, if the world is that bad, would you not just want to curl up and find something comforting and share those last moments with somebody? I don't know, and that's why I like it, because it lets you take what you want from it, in the way that all good writing should. And also, it is worth pointing out, Martin Simmons is an absolute legend. I cannot think of a better person to have done this artwork. His mixture of deep rich colours, horrific imagery, and wonderful three-point perspective. I mean, mwah, the first, first page of it blew my mind. 
it's a, a, a dream uh, a dream team working together. I genuinely can't wait to the next one. It's a bit of a shame Martin Simmons isn't carrying doing it, but I can't wait to see what other people do. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. Because it's just a one thing, a one shot story as well, you can buy any one of these and just read them and enjoy them. And that's a cool thing that comic books should be able to do. You should be able to walk into a comic book store and go, I want to read this, buy it, read it, and get everything you need from it. I have no notes. Genuinely fantastic comic book, and I can't wait for the next one. Uh, that's it for the week, though. Um, it was a small week. Uh, mostly I've been reading the Night Terror stuff, and so far I've got to say, yeah. Um, so uh, next week we'll get more stuff. Until then, look after you, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.